three, two, one. What's going on, everyone? You're watching Ash on Comics. Today is Wednesday, September 18th, 2019, and you know what that means. That's right. That means it's time for Ash Wednesdays. Joining me, as always, is Stan the Man. He needs no introduction. And, uh, oh, Stan, you got me a big-ass double gulp. Jeez, thanks, bud. I, oh, it's to share for the whole crew. Oh, speaking of crew, there's Forky. He's always joining us. Thanks, Forky. Why are you hiding behind the box, man? You're a movie star. Don't you remember? Um... There it is, Ash Wednesdays. This is my big expensive movie prop. I use a cardboard box. Um, sorry if you've been waiting for this to come out. Uh, I know I used to want to get these out early in the morning and produce them, but the, now with the longer video style uh, and getting to the store late, look at that. It's 2 p.m. as I'm filming this, and I haven't even, <laughs> it'll probably take me 45 minutes to do this and then an hour to edit and save it, upload. You know, geez, it's gonna be a while, but I will get this out as soon as I can. Um, so without any further ado, Eric Breen has pointed out he waits way too long to see the burger, so I'm going to get right to it. Now, if you're new to the channel, like, uh, the real Dr. Venkman, who, uh, <laughs> doesn't watch my videos, I don't know if he got this far, his attention span is a little short, you may wonder, why do I have a burger, uh, on my, <laughs> why am I unboxing a burger on my channel, who cares? Well, it kind of started off as a joke or whatever. I'm a big fan of In-N-Out Burger, and uh, I recently moved back to California. I was didn't have In-N-Out Burger for 17 years, and I was like, you know, Wednesdays is a big ritual. Go 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 store. I'm gonna have lunch at In-N-Out, kind of make a deal out of it, and so that's what I do. And then I decided the name In-N-Out. My, my my videos used to be called the In-N-Out Weekly Comics Pull List, and it just was like, oh, kind of like, oh, the idea of like, oh, I'm gonna do a quick little video. You get in and out, you'll see the video and you're, and you're on your way. And then I started realizing as I was watching other pull list videos that I didn't like these five or 10 minute videos where people are just like, here's my book, here I pulled this, I bought this, I bought this, uh, and that's it, see ya. Like, <laughs> you're just showing me comics. I just came from a store where I saw all the comics. Like, you gotta talk about a little bit more why you bought the comics, why you didn't buy certain comics, things like that. It makes it a little bit more interesting. Now, certainly you might be going, well, burger's not that interesting. I eh, know, it's more of a tradition on this channel than anything because of the history. And uh, if you want to go and see why, I guess you can go back and watch the first in and out Weekly Comics pull this video uh, to get a thing. But man, I just like seeing every week unboxing, see how they did this. They did a stellar job this week. Holy shit, look at how perfect that looks. You know how many places you go and you're just like, the burger never looks like the picture or whatever. In and out burgers look better than the picture. I think I think this looks better. Um, the picture looks too perfect. It looks like almost fake. This looks like a real burger because it is real burger. And uh, I'm gonna munch this sucker. And uh, maybe maybe I'll share it with the guys. What do you think, guys? Think we share it with you? All right. Well, I will see you soon. Um, until then, enjoy a nice Batman wallpaper. All right, welcome back. Thanks for indulging me and bearing with me while I eat my lunch. Uh, share it with these guys. Was that a good burger, Stan? Yeah? Oh, geez, Stan. Thirsty, huh? Drinking a lot. Forky, what'd you say? That was your best burger ever? Yeah, I know how you feel. So this is Ash Wednesdays. Um, if you're new, you're not understanding my channel or whatever what I'm doing, some weirdo guy just pointing a camera at a box. This is my pull list video that I do every week. It started off just talking about my comics. It was the in and out weekly comics pull list, yada, yada. Uh, but I wanted to be a little bit more than just talking about some new books. And I didn't want to do this drama channel. I didn't want to make specific videos about different topics. There's people that do all that. They do it a little bit more professionally and stuff and devote more time to it than I do. But this channel is about talking comics and it's talking to you guys, getting your feedback, kind of having that conversation. So you just slowly kind of evolving over time. One of the things I do as a regular feature of this channel is the um, Marvel number ones. So let's talk about that. Every week, Marvel has new number ones that, that come out. And I like to make fun of them because it used to be... Really, dog? That's my dog. Um, <laughs> you're like, well, that's, that's a black dog. What happened to the yellow dogs? As a longer story, uh, that's my dog. And of course, she's drinking on camera. 
they all like to do it. They like to sneak in and get their camera time. So, um, what was I saying? Number ones. It used to be Marvel might release a handful of number ones a year. They were very conservative. It was all about having their lineup of comics, making sure that they were solid, you know, comics that people would buy for years and years and years. And they didn't really mess with the formula too much. When they launched a new comic, it was, you know, it was tried and true, tested. They would maybe have a mini series the year before, test the water, see what people thought. And um, then they would, nowadays, it's just throw everything out there. Just barf out every comic you can possibly think of. Is there a character in the universe that doesn't have a comic book yet? Give them a comic, you know? <laughs> so I like to make fun of them. They release, they release half a dozen comics every week, it seems like, on average. Um, so here we are. Spider-Man number one. This is the big controversial issue. Remember back in the day, you probably don't, but it was the early 90s. I think it was, yeah, early 90s when Todd McFarlane got his Spider-Man number one. There was a lot of controversy back then, too, because McFarlane was just an artist. And it was like, how dare he get his own Spider-Man comic? He's not a writer, but the dude sold millions of issues. What's funny about today is this is just handed to some kid who's never written a comic in his life. He's never drawn. He's he's just the son of a rich Hollywood director. And uh, <laughs> Marvel Comics being this big woke company, you know, pushing these far left progressive politics. It's really funny that they have a book that's the epitome of the argument about white privilege. <laughs> about, um, and, but you know, money talks, right? Uh, and hypocrisy is full, uh, on that side. Uh, so it, it should not surprise anyone. He doesn't have a Spider-Man with the subtitle. It's literally Spider-Man. Um, so this is, this is pretty impressive, also pretty hypocritical, um, big double standards for Marvel. I saw this at the store and, uh, I kind of had to laugh, but I flipped through it a little bit. I was surprised. The interior art looks pretty nice. It's, I mean, just from flipping through it, it looks like it could be a good Spider-Man comic. So I'm going to try to get a hold of a copy to read and, um, maybe review it just to see what it's like. I'm not against Henry Abrams being a success. I'm against non-merit hiring. And if the guy really is a talent, he can work his way and get his talent shown the way all talented creators have in the past. He doesn't need to be privileged. He doesn't need to be handed a flagship title just on his name, right? He'll, he'll get there based on his merit, if he actually has merit. Um, but one of the things I wanted to talk about was one of the covers of this book. Um, First of all, look at all the variant covers that this book has. Do, 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 Jeez, come on. You'd think, you'd think Todd McFarlane was releasing a, a new book himself. Um, let's turn on that brightness, jeez. Uh, but look at this one right here, if we can get this to pull up. Um, and then magnify it. Oh, no, not, not that way. This way. Look at this cover. <laughs> Take a look at all of its glory. <laughs> this is a Marvel comic. <laughs> this looks like a kid drew it. What is this? What? Jason Poulter is the name. I don't know who this is. Um, so, uh, Wow. Anyways. <laughs> um, so I was like, I saw that, I saw that in the shop and I was like, Oh my God, what the hell am I looking at? <laughs> so Sp Spider-Man number one, it's going to be huge, right? Because Hey, that McFarlane Spider-Man number one from 20 something years ago, it's worth so much money today, right? If you just had a copy of that book, make sure you get all the variant covers because you don't want to miss the boat on a second time hint that Spider-Man book's not worth anything. Um, then there's never a week, except actually there was a week, where Star Wars didn't have a number one. <laughs> but they make up for it because some weeks having two number ones. And this is Star Wars Age of Resistance Ray number one. And then we get Star Wars Age of Resistance Rose Tico number one. Now, in, a, in, a, in an ideal world where Marvel Comics was healthy and not just trying to scam their fans for money, 
this would be a series called Star Wars Age of Resistance, right? And then it'd be number one, Ray. Number two, da da da. Number three, da da da. Like, but no, it's not. It's just number one. This is what Marvel is moving to. They're moving to the idea of seasons, like TV shows, where they just reboot every season, so you'll be able to have number ones every time. So it'll be an ongoing series, but it'll be like six issues a season. And then, you know, instead of continuing off from number six to number seven, it'll be like season two, episode, issue one, because they, these number ones sell. That's what Marvel's realized. They release the number one, they hype it up, it sells all of it, and then people stop buying it. So... What Marvel's really doing, they're not selling comics to readers. They're selling comics to collectors. You can tell by this mentality. People say, oh, that's not true, Ash. People, you know, there's a lot of readers of comics. There are. But that's not what, that's not what buy Marvel books. Because it used to be Marvel just churned out a book every month and constantly focused on the quality and didn't care about number ones. And they just wanted people not to leave their books. Just keep reading month after month, and people would jump on. Now, that's not what happens. Now, it's got to get that number one sale, and then there's a massive drop-off until it's not viable anymore, then cut it. And those aren't readers. P readers don't buy an issue and then stop the story. You don't. Readers don't open up a book and read the first chapter and then be like, oh, that's cool. I'm glad I bought that book. That's not what readers do. This is collectors. Collectors, they go to the store, they like having the issues, and number ones are ingrained to be collector's items, which I don't understand. They're really not. Um, so, so stupid. And who cares about Rose Tico comic? And then we get Black Panther and the Agents of Wakanda. <laughs> this looks, looks terrible, too. The cover looks like such a joke. It's uh, so stupid. But hey, this week, it's only going to cost you $17 to add these number ones to your pull list. So, you know, $17 this week. I think it was like $40 last week or something. So uh, that is the number ones. Tell me what you think about those in the comments below. All right, hold on to your hats for this one. Newsarama reports, Superman, to reveal his secret identity to the world this fall. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, Brian Brinkle Bendis apparently, um, you know, after getting all that flack from changing Superboy and destroying the John Kent that everyone loved, aging him up to 17 so he can throw him in his own Legion of Superheroes book so he could, you know, puff up his own ego, I guess. Um, he just said, hold my beer. And uh, you think that was crazy? Watch what I'm going to do next with Superman. And this isn't for the better. Bendis, unfortunately, he hasn't done anything for the better. In this article, it writes, Writers Brian Michael Bendis and Greg Rucker are about to do what Lex Luthor never could and unmask Superman this December. Now, maybe Lex Luthor never could do this, but this has happened in the past. Um, in 2015, as a matter of fact, uh, they did this. And uh, it didn't work. <laughs> it really didn't work. And uh, it was part of the overall failure of DC at the time. And remember they had to fix that failure with the thing called Rebirth? <laughs> well, apparently DC doesn't remember having to fix things with Rebirth. They think that failure time was a successful time. And look at this. Look at this. This is the upcoming Lois Lane, where it's going to happen. And look at her, that female power. She's the real Superman, not this cuck boy. Um, that's a bunch of ads. So, look, this is probably something you're not new to. You've probably seen it on Twitter. You've probably seen it around. Uh, I'm late to the party because I make these videos uh, once a week. But I just thought I want to talk about it because this this is stupid. <laughs> this is this is the hashtag Fire Dan Didio. This is why because they're letting people like Bendis run amok and destroy the characters that the fans love, right? The people who buy Superman books are Superman fans. I buy Superman, well, not anymore, but I did because I was a fan of Superman. And then you hired this Brian Michael Bendis guy and you drove me to stop buying Superman. I do not understand why 
they're doing this. I don't understand why as, as the sales plummet, they continue to just keep stepping on the gas. Dan Didio said at, uh, was it San Diego Comic-Con? I think it was San Diego Comic-Con where he realized, he made that, that famous um, declaration, I guess, about how the facsimile editions, that fans are more interested in old comics than new comics. Um, he made the statement to recognize, and he said, we need to do, we need to tell these stories that the fan. But then you're doing this. You're doing this crap. This is terrible. Um, so, <sighs> yeah. So, speaking of DC doing terrible, and Marvel, here we go, to counteract all the, the, the stupid ideas that DC is doing, we get Marvel saying, or no, they're not saying this, we get Marvel uh, in the news from Bleeding Cool. Oh, God help me, I'd have to use Bleeding Cool. Marvel Comics tops 50% in April 2019 market share for the first time in over 10 years. As reported by Rich Johnston, oh, heaven help me. The last time I think this happened was in September 2008, and I don't recall it happening before or since, but in April 2019 market share, released by Diamond a couple weeks after the March market share, Marvel Comics has taken over 50% of the market share for sales numbers for that month. It's not only remarkable, it's not the only remarkable note for this month's statistics, but it will be a big one. It's a notable that Marvel had twice as many titles as DC, but this also included Marvel's extensive True Believers dollar reprint line. In 2008, the competitive state of DC was a lot lower, with only Superman and All-Star Batman in the top 15, with, with the Stan and the Dark Tower in the top 10, and Buffy outselling all but one DC comic. It was a different world. Um, so here is the, the pie chart here of April 2018. Um, this, you can go to Bleeding Cool yourself if you dare. I, I, I don't recommend. This is like the only place that had the, um, the, the story, though, that I just kind of wanted to talk about. Um, here's the thing. Just a few short years ago, we can see uh, here in 2016, DC, oh, come on, this is, DC Comics, <laughs> uh, God, Bleeding Cool, let's try again now, DC Com, Jesus, Bleeding Cool, DC, <laughs> close the fucking it. Oh, gee. DC Comics humiliates Marvel with August 2016 market share as Diamond sets a record month of sales. So, just a few years ago, it was a topsy-turvy world. What was going on in, in 2016? Oh, yeah, DC Rebirth. You know, that time where fans all flocked back to DC because they loved what DC was doing. Now, the article states in here, just to remind you that in April, DC had a dollar share of 25% and a sales share of 25%, right? So they're talking about in 2016. In May, that rose slightly to 26 and 26. In June, it jumped from 29 to th 229 and 31. And in July, it went to 35 and 40%. In August, DC Comics owns 39% and 44% in the dollar share. In four months, that is a move of 20 percentage points and a remarkable change. That's understating it there, Rich. While Marvel Comics, who back in April had a dollar share of 42% and a sales share of 47%, crashed and burned 30 and 32. And they do a nice chart here. As you can see, in 2016, in August 2016, here was DC's retail market share of 39% and their, their overall uh, unit share of 44% where Marvel was 30 and 32. It hasn't been the same since. DC was literally stepping on the throat of Marvel. They had their, their boot on Marvel's throat, and all they had to do was step down. And I apologize for this autofocusing. This is not the normal phone app I use. Um, look at where it is now. Marvel is at, they don't have a chart like this, because I don't know what Rich is doing, but Marvel's now over 50%. And DC is at 25%. This is how bad <laughs> DC is dropping the ball. 
So I just kind of wanted to touch this. It's not the way I wanted to present it originally, but my phone has been crashing left and right. It's taken me hours uh, to, to make this video uh, to get everything out because I've had to do take after take after take. Every time the video crashes, it's not like the video was salvageable. I just start all over and you lose all your energy, you know, like when you have uh, and there you go. So uh, take that with what you will. That's my news for the day. Uh, I would talk more about this, but my, my phone's probably going to crash any moment. So we'll see if I can squeak this in. Uh, if you see this in the video, then I squ squeaked it in. If it, if it plays all clunky and disjointed, you know why. Um, so thanks for being patient with me. And on to the next segment. All right. Let's get to the comics. This is what you've been waiting for. Here's my comic box. Here's my receipts. I have two receipts because I found a comic after I cashed out and I had to get that added as well. It's only a buck 42, so I'll give you one guess what that book is. Always keep your receipts. SJWs, progressives that don't actually really buy comics will insist that you don't actually buy comics too. Um, well, you, you might not actually buy comics. Hopefully you do. Um, this is my first thing here, Batman Nightwalker. You're like, Ash, what the hell would you get this? Actually, it's a little freebie. It's kind of like a mini book. Um, it's a preview. They threw that in for free for me. So I was like, you know, I'll take free stuff. They were going to turn that down. So uh, I'm sure this is terrible, but hey, it's free, right? And then speaking of other things free, uh, Marvel has got, oh, look at their Spider-Man number one behind the scenes edition. Free. So you get some black and white art from that book. So, hey, I'm not going to turn that down. Now, starting off with the indies, we got Birthright 39. This is actually two weeks ago, but Diamond screwed the comic book store. And uh, when they screw the comic book store, they screw the, the fans. So I had to wait two weeks because they just didn't deliver the book. Um, it's got a pretty cool cover. This is a great book. Joshua Williamson is a guy right Flash. He's also the guy's writing the new Batman Superman book, which I gave a positive review. This is a great indie book. Uh, you should be checking it out. Speaking of great indie books, um, Firefly is not really a great indie book, um, but it's, it's Firefly. I love Firefly. Uh, I like that particular uh, cover. Jane is my favorite character on Firefly. And um, yeah. All right, <laughs> man, I apologize for the weird cuts, uh, camera issues, etc. I just decided to put this on a tripod. Um, hopefully that'll help some fix some things. But next issue, continuing on indies, we've got Red Koi. Now this is the comic that I got. Um, it was $1.42 because I got you know, the discount um, and so forth. But... I was really amazed. My store doesn't normally carry alternate books unless I have special order, which I do. And then, then this book came out. I didn't know about it. And I was like, well, I wanted to get it. And I didn't order it, but they actually got a couple. And there was two on the shelf. So I was like, yes. So I was all excited. I went back and got it. So support alternate books. Uh, I urge you. It's a buck fifty. You can't go wrong. Limited investment. Look, you got a two-issue micro-series. Red Koi. Um... Really looking forward to this book. Now, on to DC. We've got Justice League, uh, number 32. Uh, Justice League's probably one of the best books over there at DC. Consistently just solid. Scott Snyder, James Tinian collaborating. Um, it's probably not as much Scott Snyder these days um, because he's off doing other things, um, managing events, writing his Batman books. Uh, but... I, I never was a Justice League fan until Scott Snyder. So what are you going to say there? Uh, I like what he does. He makes fun comics. I know some people don't like his big, oh, it's, it's too out there, big world stuff. And it's like, well, it's it's fun. It's creative. Um, and I guess, you know, not everything is everyone's cup of tea. Um, some people like street level heroes. Some people like cosmic heroes. Some people, you know. But uh, I gave this book a chance because so many people were, you know, big Justice League fans and so forth. And so when the new series came out, I said, I'm just going to buy a couple of the books and see. And it won me over. 
and now I think this is one of the best books at DC. So hallelujah. If you want Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman and you just think I'm tired of all the, the shit writers they put on those characters, here you go. <laughs> here you go. Um, now, next we get the Batman Who Laughs. Wait, didn't we just have this? Yes, we did. But this is the special, special edition. What am I putting this? I can't even grab it now. This is the Batman uh, special edition. Uh, what do you call it? The Batman Day, which is actually Saturday. But what are you going to do? Uh, they gave it to me. They put it in my box. And I was like, awesome. Um, I'll take free comics. So this is basically Batman Who Laughs number one. Uh, it's free. So if, if you missed that series, ask your store for this. They may not have it till Saturday, or you know they probably have it now, but they may not let you get it till Saturday. Um, celebrating Batman, get it free. This is another Snyder. Oh, actually, Tinian, is this? This isn't a different Batman. If this is different, I thought this was just a reprint. Well, I don't, but Snyder did Batman last, not James Tinian. Wait, and this is Rosmo. This might be a different book. Oh, well, even almost even better. Uh, last year they did um, the Batman the White Knight for Batman Day, so you got a free special edition of Batman Night White number one, which I picked up. That was cool. Um, this might be a different book. I didn't even know that. Mm, and now from the Batman who laughs to the Batman who sucks. Um, you know, just getting cucked by Catwoman in your own book. That's what's always good. That's what all Batman fans want. But I can't stop buying Batman. <laughs> uh, I was going to stop buying Batman, but King's Run ends at 85. And then I feel like there's this hole in the collection. And I'm just like, uh, and I know it's sad. And then I was like, well, if I do stop, I at least should see City of Bane out because I hate in the middle of the run. But uh, anyways, and from the Batman who sucks to the Batman who's amazing and we all wish <laughs> was the real Batman at DC. Um, we got Sean Murphy's Curse of the White Knight book two. This is nothing new. I've already picked up this book. This was the alternate cover that was just sitting in my pull list. I was waiting for a smaller week so I could get it. Um, so there's the cover for it. I like kind of what they're doing with the alternate covers. They're featuring each of the each uh, different character from the series. So um, yeah, that's pretty cool. The first one I think was Azrael. Then this is Batman. I think the next one's Alfred maybe. Um, and then moving on to Marvel, we have uh, Guardians of the Galaxy number nine. This is a fun book. Donnie Cates is writing it. It's not quite to the level of his other stuff that, that he's known for. It made him kind of a big shot at Marvel, like Venom. Um, also, man, Thanos wins. I urge you to read that. That's such a cool book. Um, and I think even Cosmic Ghost Rider was was underappreciated by a lot of people because of its weird zaniness, but really strong story underneath all that. Um, this is just really solid, fun comic book writing. It's not super deep, but it's just solid. It's what you kind of wish Guardians of the Galaxy would be. And uh, shout out to Real Comic Stacks, fellow YouTuber. He sold me on this book. I tried it out, and I love it. Now, the last two books... Um, are the big, the big hurrah. Uh, this is, I never thought Marvel would be doing this. Everything's kind of flip-flopped, but here we go. We've got Absolute Carnage number three. I did a review on the first two. Why did I do a review on the second one? I don't know if I did a review on the second one, but I did a review on the, on the first one and it's a solid, it's a five-star book. Uh, Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman are a uh, force to be reckoned with over there at Marvel and I'm not a big symbiote guy. I'm not, but Donny Cates is, he's so creative and his ideas are so out there that he's able to take things that I don't find interesting and make them interesting. And speaking of someone who takes something that hasn't been interesting and makes it interesting, um, wow, Jonathan Hickman is is doing the biggest surprise, long, long horse, what do you call it, long shot, uh, you know, what do you call it? The um, when you're like, anyways, it's a long shot. I think yeah, it's the right term. 
I never expected X-Men to be good. I haven't bought X-Men in 20 years, and now I'm buying X-Men because Hickman is doing fantastic. This story has hooked me. There's been parts of it that I've been critical about, and you can see my reviews where I was like, eh, but then he wins me over. And that's great writing. When 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 something, when I read something and I go, ah, I'm not liking what you're doing here. This isn't rubbing. But then later on, you sell me on that idea and you say, see, you, if you trusted me, you can see I, I was doing something right with it. And Hickman has so far been doing that. I still have a lot of reservations because I've been burned by X-Men for a long time. Uh, well, I haven't really been burned other than the fact that I haven't been able to buy them because they're just so terrible. <laughs> um, I haven't been able to stomach buying them. Obviously, I can could buy them if I wish to. Um, but that's it. That's my pulls this week. Um, looks like a bigger week than it was. Uh, this I had a couple from a previous week's. And um, that's it. So, what do you think is going to be the best, Stan? What do you think? Huh? You got to go with your Marvel? I don't blame you. I don't blame you. And uh, Forky. Oh, geez, Forky. What, what do you think is going to be the worst, my friend? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, God. It's not fair. You always pick Batman. But uh, you, you're the expert on trash. Um, so, that's my pull list for this week. I uh, thank you very, very much for watching. Um... As always, I, this this video has been a nightmare to produce. Uh, not because I didn't enjoy making videos for you, it's just because I've had so many technical problems. I think my phone is having some sort of malfunction and the camera constantly crashes. Uh, I'm using a, a, a different, a third party phone app and hoping it doesn't crash. It's working okay, but it has some weird focusing issues and th things that I don't like. So hopefully I can find a workaround on this and keep making videos. Um, Hopefully this video didn't turn out too bad, and uh, but if it did, you understand why. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, put your comments down below. If you hit, if you're gonna hit that thumbs down button, uh, that's certainly within your right. But just you know, tell me, tell me why you're hitting the thumbs down button, so I have something to try to correct or make better, um, or I can understand. You know, if, if you know, if I have. Tons of people all saying the same negative thing. Obviously, you have to listen to that. Um, if you're just doing a thumbs down just because you're like being a troll, well, I, I guess I can't stop you there. But whatever. Uh, enjoy comics. That's the key here. Like, there's lots of reasons to hate comics. Like, right? They're they're Marvel and DC are shitting the bed in their own different ways. Uh, well, but DC's on a downhill trajectory. Marvel's slightly on an up trajectory, and we got to focus on the good without ignoring the bad. You don't have to be hate everything in order to make a point. You can be hypercritical of the things that are deserving. Dan Didio needs to get fired. Brian Michael Bendis needs to get taken off as Superman. Uh, Tom King is getting taken off Batman, but, you know, I, I think the free market's going to sort that out when he doesn't have Batman to boost the sales anymore. I think people are going to realize that Tom King doesn't sell books. We'll see. Um, that's what I encourage you to do. If, if, if Marvel's making shitty books and you hate Marvel because of it, be, be critical. But when they make a good book, don't snub your nose at it just because you want to hate it, right? Because you're mad at Marvel. If we don't give credit where credit's due, then what are we really bitching about, right? If we're bitching like, oh, they're just making a bunch of shit comics, ask yourself, do you want them to make good comics? And if the answer is no, then why are you bitching? You're just being making noise. If the answer is yes, and you do want to make a comics, then you got to recognize when they do. You have to say, good job. This is what we wanted. This is the good books that we like. Do more of these, please. And how do you say do more of these, please? With your wallet. Money talks. Believe me, it does. People don't think that it does. Um, because they go, well, nothing's happening. Marvel's not making a change. Yeah, because no one's talking with their money, <laughs> right? When when uh, some of the greatest books out there, like I was talking about, here we go, Curse of the White Knight. It can't even break 100,000. This is one of the best comics I've read, and it can't break 100,000. You're, you're not talking with your, your, your money. Uh, if this were all of a sudden selling 500,000 units, DC would understand. Like, oh, shit, 
this is what people want. But when this sells barely more than this, why are the bean counters think that they need to give, they need to invest a lot more money in this guy than this guy? Do you see what I'm saying? Right? If, if Jonathan Hickman can barely sell more X-Men than Rosenberg, then why pay Hickman a bunch of money when you can just have a half like Rosenberg who did the last uncanny and they can just sell those books? It has to sell. You got to support the good stuff. Anyways, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm trying to encourage you uh, with my own feelings. And I've blabbered way too long. Um, <laughs> this has been a shit show of a production. I thank you very much for watching. And I look forward to talking to all of you. Thanks.